I am building a 2000 points list for tournaments. Am I taking some plague bearers? Do I need some pink horrors? Do I need a big scary bloodthirster in this list? Should I take Bellacore for the anti shooting at 18 inches? Or am I going to get a great unclean one with the endless gift to be really resilient and hard to kill? Stay tuned to find out. Let's get rid of those visuals and let's go through the list. So first half we have Bellacore. Yes, we are selecting Daddy Bellacore. That 18 inch anti-shooting is absolutely important and immaculate in this list. And uh, for me, he's very close to an auto include. Not all the time, but I am trying them out in this list. Next up is Horticlus Slimux. I think I said his name right. We're going to be using him to uh, create Shadows of Chaos across area terrain features, which I think is pretty tasty for 120 points. Next up is the Rotigus. We love a big guy, don't we? We love a big, big fatty in the middle. It's probably where he's going to go. Um, next up, we have Shalaxi Hellbane, the cruise missile herself, launching herself forward to destroy anything she touches. And last but not least for the big guys, it's Big Scarbrand. Ah. <coughs> Jesus. We're bringing him in with a rapid ingress. Again, that flat six damage is absolutely sensational when it does pay off. Next, carry on and forward. That's the big guys. We have a squad of Nurglings, which we're going to be using very specifically in this list for this style of play, which we'll go through further on in the video. Same with the next three units. We have three, indi four? three individual units of Beasts of Nurgle. Love these little guys. And you've guessed it, one of them will be led by Horticus Slimux. And then... Nearly rounding off the list, we have one unit of Seekers. These quick, quick boys are going to help us early on in the battle, but then they will probably die off and dwindle away into the ether. Back into the warp they go. And lastly, rounding off the list, is a Soul Grinder of Nurgle. Um, we'll go, I'll go to a bit more in depth while we're picking him when we talk through the tactics. Um, yes, solid at 990 points. The list in total is 100, what, 100? 1,975 points. So there is room to remove and put stuff in. I'm still tinkering this list. Um, yeah, so that is the list. Let's break down the tactics. Now, we don't know what mission we're going to play in, so I'm using the battlefield on your screen as a bit of an example because that's all I can do at the moment. So we're going to talk about what we're going to do with this list and how I plan to play this list. So I am going to go fixed and I am picking uh, the secondaries behind enemy lines and deploy teleport Homer. So th there's a few key units in this in this list that are, are vital to making this work. So first off, we're going to talk about the Seekers. The Seekers are in this list to get a potential first turn behind enemy lines. Now, I know that might not always be the case. They might get shot off the board. So we're going to position them at either flank, which you can see on your screens now. And now remember when the when the battle round starts, they do get a 9-inch scout move, and then they do move 14 inches. Uh, I have measured, measured this on the table. You would need a 2-inch charge to get them all in. A 2-inch charge, 2-inch advance to get them all, all wholly within your enemy's deployment zone. Um, and they re-roll advance or charge rolls. So for 80 points, you could be getting three points right off the bat, turn one, if you can't deep strike in first turn, if you go first. Um, they're a good player might screen this off, but you might get lucky. I'll definitely be looking at ways to um, ways to do that. You could do it down the middle, but as you can see through the terrain features, it seems the widths, as the flanks, should I say, are probably your best choice for the Seekers. Um, I didn't state this, but I will state it now. Horticus Slimux with the Beast of Nurgle and the two Beast of Nurgle and Scarbrand are in reserve. Everything else is being deployed. Now, you want to be looking at deploying everything within six inches of Bellacore, except the Nurglings. Now, the Nurglings are going to be close to the center. You want to be hiding them behind one of the uh, two terrain features to the left or right, but close to that center objective because they're going to move forget about holding the objective they're going to move there to get first turn deploy teleport homer 
and that's what we need. So if first turn that all pays off with the Seekers and the Nurglings, you started off with Zix VP straight off the bat. So it's kind of, that's what they're there for. That's what they're there to do. Um, I'd put Rotigus going towards the middle objective. The Soul Grinder can hold the home objective or then move left to right. It's got the indirect fire flame bombardment. And it also pairs quite well with the Rotigus due to the Rotigus' ability increasing the damage by one on an enemy unit. So you kind of want them holding hands a little bit, but the Soul Grinder can peel away. It depends. You can pick a flank or pick a pick a um, an objective to go on. Bellicor and Shalaxi are going to hold hands for the entire game, pretty much, which is what I've done before. You're going to look at your opponent's lists, pick out key things that need to be destroyed and got rid of, and use Bellicor as your linchpin to get Shalaxi in. Shalaxi is going to get targeted. That's why you've got Scarbrand on the bench to come in and deal with something from turn two onwards. Um, I recommend rapid ingress him in so he's not wasted. Get him in, move him up, bosh. The Beast of Nurgle and Horticus Slimux. Now, we're looking to make things Shadow of Chaos. I mean, you could you could start them on the board and then use Realm of Chaos, but I think you'd probably want to remove Shalaxi and Bellacore for that, if I'm being honest. So that's why I'm having them off the board. Um, and I'll be looking to get to, to the uh, terrain features close to the enemy's deployment, very high up. So they see the two in the corners at the top, either one of them if I can. If not, one of the two in the middle and then go across because that whole footprint is the area terrain feature as per uh, core rules. So he only needs to dip his toe in it and it's bang. It's the whole feature of Shadow of Chaos. So this guy is going to be key to creating Shadow of Chaos just in case we don't hold everything in No Man's Land. So you can still get key areas of the battlefield sorted. So let's say you uh, create this one on the left here as your Shadow of Chaos and then you're going to push up to the top left. Um, I recommend holding the middle and the right hand side so that you don't have to hold the one on the left because you're, if you're going that way, your opponent's going to come down your right hand side on your right flank. But if you commit to the right flank, let's say with a Rotogus and a Soul Grinder, they're going to come closer to this objective on the left. But you've got two area terrain features of the Shadow of Chaos, so you can get something close like a Scar Brand. Um, maybe you do pull off. Um, a soul grinder or you pull off shalaxi and bellacore and then they can get to there and clear that objective for you to then move on um that is the premise of the list anyway am i missing anybody no that's pretty much it uh the seekers are probably going to die turn one but they're there to get behind enemy lines and that's what the piece of nurgle are there to do they'll just drop in and survive and hide and then they can do deploy teleport homers in the backfield Instead of the Nurglings, that's when you can remove the Nurglings from the middle and they can make their way forward to go behind enemy lines there. Keep them hidden behind a terrain feature, whatever you want to do. And they can do deploy teleport homers. And you'll end up with them three units. They're going to try and target that and you're going to pen your opponent in a little bit to try and deal with these things. I mean, even Hortigus Slimux and the One Beast Nurgle on their own, they're going to be eventually behind enemy lines. So they can do it. So you've got units that are tough and resilient that can do these and score these points for you while you maintain your secondaries with a Rotogus and a Soul Grinder on one. Uh, Bellicor and Shalaxi tearing up another one. Um, you can use your beasts to hold an objective if you need to. You know, there's there's things in the list that can move around. You're probably going to rely on maybe making something sticky to come away uh, to counter counter punch your opponent i think you score high but i think you concede a lot as well but being honest um my game style is i throw away my home objective because all that is my shadow of chaos so if they're going to chuck something there i can chuck something in and then put it off next turn after i've killed it in their turn um i find that happens a lot anyway um did i bring a yes that's pretty much the premise of the list it's it's very simple. There's not a lot there, but there's a lot of punch as well and a lot of resiliency. Um, and I just think I've got firepower from the Soul Grinder shooting in direct uh, elite-ish infantry. Uh, Bellacor has a decent um, gun in, and uh, sweep in terms of deleting one wound and two wound models at push. Shalax is just a beast. 
Scarborough's just a beast, and he has an all right sweep as well. The Rotogus is no no pushover either. We're dealing we're dealing with elite stuff and got anti vehicle stuff in there as well with Scarbrand and Shalaxi. So we we I think we're quite quite balanced and we score quite well, um, because if they're not focusing on the monsters, they should be focusing on the little guys. So potato potato. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think this list will do well? Do you think I've missed something? I mean, I do have twenty five points spare, so you can take stuff out and put stuff in. But I just think from turn from a turn one perspective. I've got the advantage that's forcing them to deal with Seekers and dealing with the Nurglings, and it allows me to get... And don't forget, other stuff is going to be moving. It allows me to get into position to score early. I've just got to survive, and I think I survive quite well. Um, you've just got to get in pretty quick and deal with them shooting threats. And obviously, Bellacor is going to help protect himself and Shalaxi for as long as they can. That's why they've got. they have to hold hands. Even if you pull uh, Belakor off, drop him down within three, and advance um, Shalaxi up and drop Scarbrand in, and then charges off and just tie things up, there's loads of little tips and tricks you can do with this list. And I think it's a solid little list, and I cannot wait to try this out in a tournament. Uh, what would you change, if anything? Let me know in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.